Hey guys, it's Alex here and today I've got a number After Effects tutorial for you and this time I'm going to be going over the, the effect how I got these headshots engraved into the wall um, and they look really quite realistic because when they're motion tracked you've got some motion blur and stuff going on it's really, it, they look really nice and I got a lot of requests to do this so I'd, I'll just show you a sort of, so like, as you can see they're stuck to the wall, look really nice the, um, now, for this tutorial, you will uh, there'll be a link in the description. You go check out Video Copilot. I mean, I didn't make this myself. I I adapted it. I didn't make it. But basically, you want to uh, download this Crumble project file, uh, and you just you just click on the project, and it will download. And then when you're in After Effects, you're just gonna double click in here, or press Control I, and you're just going to want to import. It will come in a folder like this, and you'll just import the Crumble tutorial download. Now you can follow along to the to, to the uh, tutorial. Uh, it's a long tutorial, and um, a lot of the work's done for them. So I'm not taking any credit for this. Video Copilot did it. Um, so yeah, let's get into this. So here I have a cinematic. It is all motion tracked. I assume you know how to motion track. There's probably enough tutorials. Um, if you really want me to. <clears throat> show you, sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> if you really want me to uh, show you how to motion track, then uh, leave a comment. But I think it's, you know, there's a hell of a lot of tutorials on them these days. So, but anyway, we should get into this. So, we'll just open up this uh, folder. And now, <clears throat> in here, you we have the background. We're basically going to be needing, oh, for God's sake, hey, when it does that. Um, so we've basically got a background here. I'm just gonna, and you want to open up the background composition. Now you can have to. Now all of it's in uh, nine nine sixty by five uh, five forty. So we want to change that back to twelve eighty by seven twenty, um, like so. And we can just delete this concrete thing, and we can drag in our clip that we that you'll be using. So you can just copy your layer in, or you can just drag it in because I pre-composed it. So now that we have that, um, let me just check that is, yeah, that does look all right, okay. So yeah, we can drag that in, so now we've got our background there. And then we can also open, just up this, let's open up the final comp. So this is gonna have everything in together. Um, we can delete this solid, it's just essentially a bayonet, um, like that, which is a bit sort of color correction. As you can see, we get this all these cracks and stuff that look really quite nice. And it's actually an animation, so things you sort of cracks on, but we don't really want that. So I'm just gonna, I'm actually just gonna copy all of these and paste them into my main composition, like so. And I'm just gonna go to a point where they finish cracking and they're just still like this. And I'm just then going to go to time and then freeze frame. And now the problem with everything now is that they're all in the wrong sort of ratio. So we're gonna have to just go, you're just gonna have to go through and just have to change them all to 1280 by 720. Um, so all of these have to change, unfortunately. Um, so you just gotta go through, keep on going, so that one's done. Also here, composition settings. This is just going to make it easier for everything to um, look good. Good. Yeah, sorry, my voice. My voice is a bit croaky, just because I I only just got. Up. Well, we've already done that one. So you're just going to have to want to go through all of these. We've done that one as well. Um, I think we've done any of these. Uh, yeah, it's hard to remember what you've actually done when you haven't so I've done that. So just keep on going through. Done that. I don't think I've done that one. Uh, to amazing. And of course, if you have the uh, locked aspect ratio, then it just speeds up the whole process. All right, we can probably leave it there for now. Now we can select all of them and we can go transform 
and reset. It's so just now they're now back in the middle like that. And because we freeze frame them, they're all going to be the same in the same place throughout. Now we can actually delete the background there, sorry, because we don't actually need that in here because we because we had that, it didn't look like the background was moving. So we don't actually need that. Now, what we can now do is we can, I'm just going to close all of these so we don't get confused. Now, if you want to change it, now I do want to change it. I want to say change it with a headshot. So let me just get my headshot image. So we've got my headshot image here. I'm just going to drag that into its own composition. And I'm just going to, um, I'm just trying to think how to do this. I'm trying to remember how I did it. Uh, we'll just leave that like that for now and what we're going to do is we're going to go to the title holder I believe yes and we're going to just all right, we can delete the adjustment layer <coughs> excuse me and we can delete the text but if you want text then obviously change it and we're just going to drag our headshots comp in and we can just scale this down so I think we should make what we should do is and we should now add a fill like so drag that on and if we can just uh, get get the color that was used there like that and we just want to scale it down and you probably can skew this so you then you want to sort of just make the cracks look a bit more realistic so probably bring them in a tad a bit more like that and now if we go back into our main, everything should update and we just have our headshot logo, which is pretty neat. And now what we can do is we can just scale these down. And now because I've already got a camera and I've already motion tracked it, all I have to do is I just have to make these a 3D layer. Now it will probably disappear. Now it looks like this because it's really far forward in the uh, Z space. So we just want to push that back. And when we get it looking like it's staying in the same place, probably just push it back a tad. We can now shift this across. We can line them all up, scale them up, scale it up again, and just make it look like it's going to fit. Let's probably scale it down, make it about 200, I think, for me. So you can use whatever you want on here. And then all I did is just I simply duplicated and then got a position, dragged it across, duplicate again, P, and then dragged it across. So obviously they're not perfect, they're not in the right place or anything. Obviously you would want to play around and tweak, but that is how I did it. And to be honest, I think it's a really cool effect. It looks very nice. Now these actually can go be pushed back even more because you see how they're moving. It's because they it thinks they're right out in front of the camera, but they're not. Um, but yeah, yeah, you're, I'm sure you can be able to motion track. But yeah, so yeah, that it looks that looks really nice. So yeah, that is basically an effect, guys. Um, I'm recording. I'm just having a big session of recording tutorials today, so I'm sure so there are going to be quite a few out soon and if you uh haven't seen my baker edit already there'll be a link in the description go check it out i was really happy with the feedback and yeah just most mate motivates me to do more tutorials and edits so yeah that's all guys um thank you for watching and i will see you in the next one cheers